great format and, uh, and can kind of reflect on my experience at this event so far. So this is my very first time that I've actually come you know, to, to this event. And I was, should I say, I've been extremely impressed with the people I met here. Over the last couple of days, met with uh, you know, a lot of uh, people who are attending the, the conference and also a lot of people who are speaking at the event, per se. So uh, initially, I had uh, you know, kind of pulled together a presentation uh, for this scenario, which was more like a beginner to intermediate level style, style of a presentation. But just keeping in mind, you know, with the kind of people I met and the, you know, how should I say, like the depth of knowledge that, you know, that the industry brings in and all the members of this particular organization bring in, I kind of updated my slides yesterday, you know, to kind of take them to a point where uh, the goal being that I really want to leave you with some food for thought instead of, you know, trying to talk to you about what virtual events are all about. So trying to take it to the one level above and uh, hopefully our frequencies match there. Okay? So I'm just going to get started with this right now. Okay, so I think uh, Michael has already explained the particular scenario in mentioned out here. There's these white papers on each of these chairs which talk about the scenario a little bit more. So the particular organization in uh, mind out here, the IFBA, uh, these are some of the stats associated with that particular scenario, okay? So the goals uh, based upon what I saw in the scenario were primarily to be able to strengthen the IFBA community, to be able to increase event participation, and then surely be able to get more revenue for the organization, okay? The recommended solution, you know, uh, is, is uh, to go ahead with a hybrid event uh, format in which we actually add a virtual event to the in-person events that are already going on. So there's two in-person events that happen on an annual basis, in January and in July. So have a, a virtual events uh, you know, attached to those and have a on-demand phase which actually would then go on for about six months from the first event onwards to the second event. So kind of coverage throughout the year, being engaged with our attendees and the audience of the organization throughout the year itself, okay? Uh, streaming about 20 to 25 percent of these sessions as they happen in the event itself, so that the people who are attending virtually do get some value out of the event. Uh, and then after that, then uh, uh, proposing a, you know, that 80 percent of the content would be then available in an on-demand format with about 15 days after the event is over. Just kind of giving a little bit more incentive to the people who actually came to the in-person event. Uh, as far as the uh, revenue and uh, you know some of the cost recoveries concerned, so surely looking into a virtual expo hall, uh, you know, to sell some of those boots to sponsors, and as well as maybe have some kind of a, uh, a fee associated to attending the event virtually as well. That would take care of some of our revenues and costs associated to the event. So when you kind of look at this particular solution, you know, in most cases, I think we've solved you know at least some of those goals that we had in mind uh, you know, when it came to the organization itself. But, uh, but I think when I think about this, and I think about you know, some of the people I've talked to over the last couple of days, I mean, this, I think, is more of a, looks like the most obvious you know, solution to this, to this uh, challenge that this organization faces. But keeping in mind that I really want to kind of take this conversation to the next level today, what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to actually take a little bit of a detour, OK? So trying to you know, incite a little bit more you know, a food for thought for, for the people involved in the audience right now, and hopefully leaving you with some, some interesting concepts in mind, OK? Uh, before that, let's just kind of take you know, a step back into time. So this is what you know, uh, events used to be, or should I say the way people you know, uh, kind of s spread their knowledge or were able to impart content out you know, to their audiences, right? Back in the day, they stand up on a higher place in the middle of the town square you know, with a big megaphone and kind of try, try to talk to the, you know, to the people out there. Uh, this was a very classic monologue style of format, one-way speech you know, in most cases. Uh, fast forwarding to today, the present. So as we all know, you know things have changed. The world has evolved. The world has advanced. But I mean, I think maybe has it really? I mean, that's the, a question to be asked to ourselves. I mean, I see a very kind of a similar format even in, in the way we impart content today. The way people learn in most situations is still a monologue. You know, this particular situation right now kind of looks like a monologue to a certain degree. One person kind of talking to an audience. You know, if you're taking time out of their out of their day to do that. So again, a very similar format. It's still a monologue you know, kind of a format. Uh, now moving, before we move ahead, I just want to point out a couple of things you know, out of the uh, IFPA uh, scenario. So uh, 45,000 members all across the world. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the bottom two uh, you know, rows in this particular table. So there is not more than, I would say, 7% of the attendees who actually come to the in-person event who actually get to showcase themselves or stand on a you know, platform of some kind are able to impart their knowledge you know, to the rest of their community. right? When this is just about the in-person event, per se. But when it comes to the all-up community, 
the 45,000 members of this organization, not more than 2% of this audience is ever, you know, in those 600 you know, plus sessions that happen in those events. Looks like big events, right? But when it comes to the overall community, we are not giving the community a chance to showcase themselves on an individual basis. I think there's a lot more people, you know, in this community beyond just the six or seven people who get to participate in those sessions as speakers who have a lot to say. Okay. So I will again revisit the challenge that we had, you know, uh, stated in the beginning of the conversation. So surely, strengthen the community, increase event participation, increase revenue. But I would certainly say expand the direct event participation, or should I say, give a lot more people the, the the opportunity to be able to showcase themselves and all the great ideas that they bring with them. So uh, before we go any further, uh, the premise out here is that we should not treat these IFPA. You know, members as kindergarten students, right? In kindergarten, it's pretty much you know a person who knows all, kind of tells these kids, okay, this is how you're supposed to live life as you start growing up, right? So do not treat them as you know as kindergarten students. These are people who have who are specialists, who are who have gained certifications, who are who are subject matter experts, SMEs in their own regard. So give them that respect, give them their opportunity to showcase themselves. And how do we do that? So the goal being, you know, some of the examples that I talked about earlier were pretty much a monologue. So we're gonna go away from that monologue style format of content delivery or engagement to more of a dialogue style of format. And how do we do that? What comes to my mind, the first one is you know, the event TED, right? The TED set of events. So the a, it's pretty much an A-class set of events. Okay, run a little further from my mail or something. Uh, it's pretty much a A-class set of events. The audience that comes there, the speakers that come there, you know, top notch, right? So keeping this as a best practice in mind. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but then again, you know, this is uh, this is also pretty much a monologue style of a format, right? So again, I'm giving and get drawing inspiration from another monologue style of event. But keep in mind, this is our inspiration. What we have as a recommendation is actually TEDx. So TEDx is the independently organized TED events. So there might be a couple of events that happen across the world, which are TED events, but then these are the events that are done by the community by themselves. So about, you know, as you can see on the map right here, this is the upcoming TEDx events throughout the world. Upwards of 300 events happening over the next you know, year or so. And uh, so what we will do out here is something we call a Social 27 virtual event in a box. Okay? The process, the way the virtual event in a box works is that the virtual event or the hybrid event that happens for this particular organization you know, that all of that content gets drawn into a library. And all of those 250 chapters from all across the world, they do have an opportunity to kind of have their own event. So in the beginning, the first phase of this particular you know, situation, what we would do is we would have an 80-20 ratio. 80% 80 of the content would still come from the you know, main event itself, and then 40% content would be localized, would be drawn and developed by the local chapter, to actually appeal to the local audience and the goals that they have. All right? And if they are a bigger chapter, they can also have a hybrid event, a one-day event maybe. As far as when it comes to the revenue, similar tactics, have a virtual expo hall, sell the sponsor boots to the local sponsors who are available in the local market, you know, just a very similar format to that. And then most importantly also utilizing some of the virtual you know, event technology innovations that have happened over the years. So very important, the three pillars, pillars to that, social, mobile, and local. Make sure you're integrated 100% with the social graph of your individuals who are attending. Make sure that you are reach them on any device anywhere, and then make sure that you are you know, adhering to the local objectives. Okay, so um, I've been given the you know time out. So basically, some of the uh, technologies that we at Social 27 use for this particular uh, you know uh, scenario at, with our clients at Microsoft and SAP. We'd love to talk to you more about those you know, at our booth tomorrow, or even available for question and answers after this session is over. And thank you so much for attending. Thank you.